Good evening everybody. Well it's good evening where I am at this moment in time. Right, on to the next part now, my loco. If you saw my last two parts you'd have seen me doing the coupling rods and the connecting rods. So if you want to take a look back at that feel free to do so at any time and catch up with them. And now I'm going to move on to the wave shaft and the valve gear. And on my general arrangement drawing, that's these items that operate the valve gear. I'll just go into a little bit more detail with this other drawing. I've not, not brought my book in, I've just photocopied it. So the way shaft and the valve gear comprises of the vibrating lever and its bushes. Um, where are we? The way shaft and its brackets, the slides and all the associated parts and bushes, the slide bracket, the slide blocks, and the valve rods. And that's what I'm doing next. And I've actually made a start here. Uh, I've actually made I've made the brackets that fit to the frame. I've not shown you me doing those because they're quite straightforward, really. All you need is to do them is uh, some three sixteenths plate, a saw, a file, and two drills, and a bit of uh, blood, sweat, and tears to to saw it and file it, etc. The only thing is to watch out on that is uh, clamp them both together while you uh, get getting the profile of them and drilling the hole. And to get the three holes that fasten them to the frame, you need them clamped together so that you can transfer your holes from your frame that you've already drilled, if you remember. So you've got to transfer those holes onto those brackets to ensure everything lines up because you want them dead in line and at the same height so by doing them together you'll achieve that the next thing I've got to move on to then is the tube that fits through through the middle of those uh, probably back in the day when this book were printed you could probably get 9 16 OD tube with a 13 30 second bore but that were back then. I don't think you can come across any of that size now. And anyway, even if I could, you know me by now. I don't. I don't. If I can help it, I don't buy things. I use what I've got on stock. So I'm making them out of this solid bar. So I'm going to move over to my lathe now and make a start on this then. Right, I've got all the components finished on the way shaft and its associated components now. And in my last clip I explained how I'm going to make it out of this solid bar. Because that's all I've got on stock. And I, and it, I don't think you can get that, that size tube in anyway. So I've made it out of solid bar. And what all I've done is, is turn the top. Drilled it both ways. I call it channel tun tunnel drilling. Going from both sides and uh, turn your top and then you've got to turn a smaller diameter on each end so that it leaves you by a 30 second you've got to take a 30 second off the diameter at each end to leave you that centre portion that fits in between these brackets now this is the method that supersedes the brazing method apparently in, that, in the book that I'm reading you can braze them on, but you've got to make sure that they're all lined up correctly. So the superseded method tells you to turn the ends to, uh, what size was it? Let me just double check. Seventeen. 30 seconds diameter so all you're doing 
your original 9 sixteenths diameter that you finished your overall tube to you've got to take a 30 second off each end to give you this dimension in between your brackets in my case it's 3.400 inches now just remember back when, we, when I was making the frame and you probably have to look back at that if you're not understanding what I'm, what I'm going to explain now because the frame in the book is to, you're told to make use 3 16 steel that's, that's no longer available readily so I've used 5mm plate so if you're using 5mm plate which I have because 5mm is a little bit thicker than 3 16 it alters your dimensions for everything inside on the inside of the frame everything on the outside stays the same and you'll have to look back at my frame videos if you don't understand what I'm talking about there so you must remember the dimensions that's given in the drawings no longer apply to this inside dimension here you must take it from your own dimension on the material that you've used and mine's 3.400 so I've turned up to a shoulder on each end equal and left in the middle exactly 3.400 inches then you slide your brackets on and once your brackets are slid on you can then set the bottom of both brackets onto your drilling table and drill these 6BA screw holes in the top and all they're doing they're going to go into a dimple in your tube what you're going to drill in and you're going to tap them 6BA and they're to, they're to locate that sh tubing solid in that frame the other alternative is to braise them on but this supersedes it take your choice take your pick right so it's critical that you get all your lengths correct here or everything's not going to uh, marry in when you come to fit your other components right so that's the tube which I made from this solid bar and in that tube then you've got to counter bore the bore seven, seven sixteenths diameter by five eighths deep and make some brass or bronze bushes and you must make your bushes protrude one sixty fourth of an inch outside the edge of the tube okay it don't matter if you make them out of brass because this is not a spinning shaft it's, it's just a turning shaft that goes in it like that so it's not spinning then once you've got your tube made and fitted and by the way I'm going to saw these 6BA screws off flush you can just put uh, hexagon headed bolts in and just tighten them down but I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding that route and I'm going to also lock tight these brackets onto the tube and then put my screws in and lock tight them in and then I'm going to just file them off flush so they don't look unsightly other than that just get the correct length stood and just screw it down to the bottom of it to locate on frame on the bracket sorry not the frame right so that's your, that's your tubing, your, bra your brackets your screws, your bushes then you've got to make this shaft 3 8 diameter to suit the 3 8 ream bushes and all that does is then slide into that make, make it to the correct length obviously it's 6 and 7 eighths in between and then there's half inch on each side turned down to 5 sixteenths and that's a nice sliding fit then in there it should be must have a little bear on the end of that there you go and then them shoulders are going to come up to that 
brass bush that protrudes a sixty-fourth of an inch outside the steel tool and that's that's it that's the way shaft finish then so I'm now going to go on to making the slide blocks the valve rods the vibrating lever that attaches to the return crank here and then there's the lever that goes up to the uh, reversing lever in the cab I'm, I'm not sure sure at size of that because I've altered my wheels remember I'm making a meter made but I'm working to sweep P drawings so that that will change as will the valve rod dimension in my case if you're making it sweet P you just make it to them dimensions in book right so that's it then that's that's all the way shaft is that is then uh, so I'm going to continue now and uh, make the slider blocks and all the rest of the valve gear anyway thanks for watching and I hope you found that interesting and uh, I'll catch you on my next video or update bye for now then